dental implant is a medical device in the form of a screw that is inserted into the jaw bones of a patient. The purpose of the uh, implant is to support either a, a, an extra tooth or a bridge or a removable denture. But the implant is basically the screw. It's made of either titanium or an alloy mixed with titanium or it can be made of a material called zirconia. The magic behind the dental implant is that the body's cells become drawn to it, attracted to it, so that the implant becomes fused with the patient's body, becomes part of the patient's body. Then you can hang anything off of it, as long as it's working and it's kept healthy. Teeth in a day is something that a lot of people ask about and um, a lot of people will say well my friend had teeth in a day why can't I or why is it that I can have teeth in a day but my wife can't and teeth in a day is something that exists it is very possible to take out a tooth insert a dental implant and attach a brand new tooth to it immediately but everything has to be done under certain conditions it is also possible to take out a whole bunch of teeth, insert four to six dental implants and attach a whole set of brand new teeth to them on the day. So a lot of people will walk in at say 9 a.m. and leave by 2 or 3 p.m. with a brand new set of teeth. It's doable, but it requires um, the right anatomy, the right type of implants, the right skills and the right conditions in the patient. Teeth in a day can range in price from as low as £10,000 for a full set of teeth uh, all the way up to £40,000 and this differs depending upon what you're having done exactly. Are you having uh, just the provisional set of teeth done, just the temporary set attached to the implants? What is the final set of teeth made from? Is it made from metal with acrylic or is it made from the latest materials like zirconia? Who's doing the treatment? How many implants? Where is it being done? And what laboratories are involved? Because laboratories vary in their costs and their prices a lot. Um, is it being done abroad in Europe or is it being done in the UK? Where are the teeth being made? Is the technician attending on the day? And how experienced is the surgeon? how much planning went into it. So it varies a lot depending on many, many factors. When we first started training or learning to do dental implants, and I speak about the generation just before me, from, from whom I learned, the objective was just to make sure that an implant works, make sure it uh, fuses with the bone and that you can get a tooth on it. Um, little thought, or not a lot of thought was given to how to make it last the longest possible. Over the years, and as lots and lots more dentists started doing more implants, um, a lot more knowledge uh, came to, to light about what happens to a dental implant as the years go by. And it was uh, found that things like adding a little bit of extra bone material um, around a dental implant can help promote the longer life of the implant. And uh, lately, and much more and becoming more fashionable nowadays, is the addition of soft tissue, gum, around a dental implant, increasing it, or the word is augmentation. The idea is to increase the amount of supporting tissue around a dental implant so that, as the years go by, there's less risk of it getting infection from bacteria um, or losing bone due to, to, due to overuse. So, Whereas in the past, um, as long as a dental implant fitted into the bone and you could get a tooth on it, that would be considered a success. Nowadays, we're looking at how good it looks, how much bone is around it, and how much soft tissue is around it, so that we can make sure that it lasts for a much longer time. And it takes an implant's dentist who keeps up with the times and trains a lot, goes on courses, refresher courses, update courses, learns new skills as you go along so that these factors can be taken into account and the lifespan of the implant can be increased. A large part of it also is about how the dental team, the dentist, the nurses, the hygienists, 
help the patient to understand what they have in their mouths and how to look after them. So it's not just about placing a dental implant, doing lots of fancy surgery and beautiful cosmetics and then sending the patient off. It's about keeping in touch with the patient, showing them how to look after their implants and helping them to identify if a problem occurs, when to come back to us. Finding a dentist to, to provide you with dental implants can be confusing. Um, the best way, I think, is to ask around, ask friends and family, um, see um, who you know who's had a dental implant before and has, ex had, a, has had a good experience. From a, a technical point of view, um, a dentist should have, ideally, some form of postgraduate training in dental implant treatments. So that can be anything from a year's course or a diploma or a master's degree. Something that, that proves that this person has done the reading, done the training and has some experience. Ideally, three to five years experience in placement is usually adequate for somebody to know what they're doing. And also, um, look at the conditions of the dental practice. Is it clean? Are they sterilizing properly? Of course, all dentists in the United Kingdom follow guidelines that they don't err from. Um, and what sort, of, what sort of implants and equipment do they use? There are various brands of dental implants. They all pretty much do the same thing, but there are just a few that have gone out of favor in latter years. So do not hesitate to ask your dentist what is the type of dental implant that you are, that you are placing for me.